What is going on, everyone? What is going on? Welcome to this week's episode, episode 92 of the STS Guys. I am Jeremy. Hey, hey, it's Larry. Hey, guys, it's Nate. And I'm Scott. And we are the STS Guys, a weekly podcast where we sit around, shoot the shit, and talk about anything geeky, nerdy, and cool. It's good to be back, guys, after after missing last week. So thanks for having me back on. <laughs> It's good to have you back, Jeremy. Yes, welcome back, man. And, and Scott, like I said, I, I have to say, like I said your 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 intro game, like I said, it's it's, on, <laughs> it's starting to get more and more on top. It's 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 on point now that I fucked it up enough times. <laughs> it sounded like real fire too, Scott. Yeah, fire I, noise. Like I said, if I if, if I had to, you know, if I was in the room, I felt like I was on fire. <laughs> I literally I can feel the heat on coming off you, Scott. The, the heat was strong. Oh, that that's just my animal magnetism. Oh, that oh God. God. <laughs> There's no denying that. You know what, guys, though? It's been a week. It has it's been, been, a, been week. a week. It has been a week. It has been a week. So uh, to, to go through, I think Nate probably has the best. It's been a week. So I'm gonna I I'm gonna force him to do last. So <laughs> That's what fair. has been going on with the other guys lately? Is the best? It's um. So, uh, so I, I, I got I got it, and it's it's been a week. Um. So I had, I guess I got something pretty cool yesterday. Uh. So I have a, a uh, so one of my friends, Cliff. He came into town. Um. Has been going, kind of going through a couple of different places in Austin, and he actually, I, I wish I had it near me. I'd, I'd, I'd actually show you guys. Uh, he actually brought me uh some stuff from the pop up shop in from Marvel Tokyo. Um, so I got like like all those like Marvel Tokyo like Endgame stuff. The, these like these uh, little like acrylic like figures. Like I said they're all from Tokyo. Um, it's pretty cool. It's like, actually pretty cool stuff. Like um, and then like like random stuff that they had too. Like they had um, so probably the, two of the coolest things that he got me was these uh, Tokyo press kits um, from when they released. Get this. Spawn back in 1997. Ooh. Oh wow! So, it's like, it's the like, John Leguizamo and uh, uh, yeah, the Michael yeah. J. White one. Yeah, <laughs> a Tokyo press kit from Spawn, like and nice, it's like, in crazy awesome condition. Like it's it's pretty it's pretty awesome. That's gotta it's be cool. rare. I don't know. It's it's, it's cool. It's like I said, it just and also just because it's from Tokyo, like I said, it just it just makes it that much that much cooler. Like it's it's pretty awesome. So shout out to Cliff, like I said for uh, for for getting me that. Nice, sweet. What do you got, Scott? Because I got nothing. Well, yeah, mine's I, gonna... I got a little something related to Nate's, but what do you got? I, I honestly have nothing for this week. I it was a very <laughs> low key week for me, so I'm gonna say it has not been a week for me. <laughs> well, let's kick off the bad news. Warm. We're not Warm. like well. The good news is San Diego Comic Con is next week. The bad news is none of us are going to the Funko booth. Like, yeah, burnt, burnt, yeah. Uh, you it, that's really sad considering like the amount of chances you guys had, and that uh, you know, you have uh, how many vote like you get like what 20 like suggestions per day, right? Like, yeah, it depends on the day. The, the way they did the exclusives letter this time is you got tokens. Um, so could, it was like maybe like 17 to 21, something like that. It was it was all around 20 per day. Um, and I think we went all in, at least for one of the days. Uh, but that's okay. You know, yeah. you know, you know what that is? It's a, it's a mind fuck to basically think that you have a chance at actually getting something like yeah. hey, I have 17 chances, or I have I have 21 chances to, to, to be able to get this. And you know what? You know what that means? I mean, you don't have a chance whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. So Larry brought up a really good point before we had started the show when he was like, yeah, that's even though I put in all my 20 like tokens into the, the Funko thing, that's still 20 tokens against 10,000 people that might also want that. So, yeah, your chances, even if you go all in, are super, super low, which is very sad. Even if it's like half that, right? 5,000 people. You get twenty tokens, hey, like, right? That's a yeah. little, that's a little sketch. Yeah, it's funny because you get into that exclusive portal and you're like, oh, I got a lot of tokens I can use here. This is great, and you start putting in the stuff that you want. And you know, I put into Funko as well because I've I've tried to get into Funko every single year. I don't collect a lot of Funko, but I try to get in for my friends, Jeremy, 
Larry, even Scott, if they want something from Funko, I try to get in for them. And in the last four years, I have not been able to get into Funko at all. So that remains to be one of the hardest things to purchase, I think, at SDCC. Um, I hope we get some kind of turn of luck and maybe they do some kind of random opening in the line so we can get in there. But um, it's pretty crazy how tough it is to get Funko stuff. And, and, and you know what? Like I said, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn back time. Like I said, I'm going to go back to, you know, to like, you know, like the, the 1800s. They're going to be shared. <laughs> if I could turn back time. Exactly. No, <laughs> I, I think just because, you know what? While everyone's busy at the, the Funko booth and all these other booths and stuff that they got, they actually got, they got into, I think I'm going to go towards these other booths to where, like, like I said, the, where they, they don't have, like I said, the, the lotteries assigned them, like Fig Pin and things like that. So I'm going back to the bartering system. So, like I said, if I can, you know, like, you know, like, hey, I got this, you know, let's, uh, let's do a little tradesies, you know, let's, let's, can, we, can, we, can we do that? Um, so I'm bringing back bartering, you know what? A little house on the prairie style. Let's, let's barter for. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. You scratch so, my back, I'll scratch yours type of thing. Oh, and, yeah. And if there's anybody I want scratching my back, it's Nate. Yeah. So, Nate. <laughs> I said we'd save you for last, so let's go through. So we talked about what we didn't get, but I think you got some stuff, right? Yeah, I actually had some good luck in the raffle, all things considered, even though we didn't get Funko. I did go in for Hasbro. Um, the Hasbro booth's always you know, pretty crazy. They always have some really great exclusives, so I wanted to try for that. Um, and then I also put in for Bluefin Distribution, which is basically Tamashi Nations. They make... The SHF um, Dragon Ball figures, they do a lot of uh, Marvel stuff. So I'm definitely going to be grabbing a couple of those. So I did get into that, which is pretty cool. Um, so I'm pretty pretty stoked about that because uh, some of that stuff you can't buy unless you have a raffle ticket. Um, so you just can't get into it by walking up. You have to get into the raffle. So I'm pretty stoked about that. So, so what that means, Nate, is you're going to be spending a <laughs> lot of money yeah, <laughs> this that's weekend. True. Yeah, um, I'm definitely going to be spending money this weekend. I've been I've been budgeting for a while, at least for the last month, trying to save up because uh, I know I'm going to go ham. But you kind of have to. This is your one chance to get some of these items. They're not going to be available for resale. Some of them aren't outside of the con. So if you're gonna if you're thinking about getting it, you might as well hop on it because even if you don't want it down the line, it's not going to be hard to get rid of. No, I, I I agree, and like I said, I think uh, well, regardless, like I said, we, we should you know silver lining to everything. We, at least we get to get in there on preview night, like you know yes. that's, that's that's a better chance than you know a good a good majority of people. Uh, right. So I, I think I think we can still you know grab some awesome exclusives, really have some awesome uh, really have some aw awesome content to actually share with our audience as well. Maybe I can meet up with a few friends along the way as well. I think I think I, it, it'll still be epic. Yeah, I mean, we focus a lot on the raffle, but there's tons of stuff that you can buy outside of the raffle just by walking up to the booths. Like NECA is one of them, which has got some huge exclusives. You just walk up to that and buy it. Mezco, that's another one. Fig pin, like you guys were talking about. So there's still going to be a lot of stuff that we have access to. It's a bummer, but it still doesn't ruin the time. No, ab absolutely not. I think it's I think it's one of those things too that uh, you know what it's still surreal. Like I said, we're gonna we're, we're gonna be in San Diego on Wednesday. I know, isn't that, isn't that nuts? It's crazy. I've been looking forward to this all year, and now all of a sudden it's right around the corner. Yeah, it's all of a sudden it's right around the corner. It's here, and I just I I still feel like completely unprepared. <laughs> um, and so like I said, like I said I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pose a question. So while, while Larry's getting back on. Um, I, I want to pose a question to you guys. Like, uh, have you done anything to prepare, or are are you are you have you bought anything to, to kind of prepare uh, for the con or or events surrounding the con, uh, like in these weeks leading up to it? I did get a backup charger, so yeah, I, say, I got tech, an tech stuff. Yeah. yeah, tech stuff. And I did buy a a really bad shirt. I, you can kind of see it right there. Yeah, uh, behind it. That's my really bad tiki shirt for fun days. <laughs> Nice. So that's gonna be that's gonna be fun. Nah, so I I said so I've actually I've 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 done some some pretty legit preparing. Um, so like the one Scott to your point, like I said, I I actually have a pretty obnoxious Hawaiian shirt. So like fun days, 
I'm set. Plus, I said I have a couple other kind of things in my face on there. Um, but then, like, even like like other like exclusives and stuff like that. So I said right before the right before we started the stream, we were all, we were all kind of looking at from the different Mondo exclusives and, and stuff like that. And so Scott, I know you're excited for that uh, that Detective Pikachu poster. Yeah, uh, like I I I am telling you right now, you guys, I'm not going to be there for the day that it's it's dropping. It, I am charging you guys <laughs> to get me that poster if you have to punch a child in the face to get it you punch a child in the face to get that poster you, you gotta do what you gotta do for your friends yeah. you heard it here they said it said we are going to be punching children in the face yeah um but i, I leave it up to anybody else who's out there if you see it because i know like clint i know you're going to be there i don't know if you're going to be on that day but I, like if you're going to be there and you walk by the mondo booth and they have those available like I am good for it. I will pay you back plus like interest for going out of your way. Fine. I need that poster. <laughs> yeah, Mondo's got some really awesome stuff. The Detective Pichu, Pikachu, Pikachu. Uh, Comic Con poster is limited to 175, so I can see why Scott's after that. Definitely going to try to get it. But they also have that really cool Batman Hush poster that we were talking about. Yeah, um, looks like you know straight off the comic book. Uh, Jim Lee style. It looks really cool. No, that um, one. That one also, cool. if, if for anybody who doesn't like, go check out some of the stuff that they have because it's pretty cool. But I do like how they did the Batman. That's kind of like the end of the Spider Verse, where he's like doing the backflip and the cape becomes the city. Like, yeah, that that that, that was really cool. And then they brushed out that Hush poster, and that thing's pretty choice. No, that 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 Hush poster. Like, so that's literally that's from. One of the comics I always wanted, I could never get. I said it's it's from the cover of a, a comic I could never get to like, get my my hands on, just because it was so freaking expensive. So that image is actually from the retailer incentive cover uh, of basically when they closed out Hush. Uh, so they released mm -hmm. this retail incentive cover of Batman Six Hundred Eight, um, and it's it's that entire it's it's that it's, image. and it is uh, a super rare comic <laughs> and it's a super rare comic and yeah. it's it's. Incredibly hard to get, and so having that in 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 poster form, dude. Yeah, I'd, I I'm all over that. And yeah. honestly, like I said, there's there's one, there's one thing I said that I, I I saw someone unbox it, and I saw I saw I saw it in I almost I saw it basically not in person, but in someone actually hold it in their hand. Um, there's something at Tamashi Nations. Um, they have that. I said that uh, metal Gundam figure. Dude, that thing is freaking awesome. Like, yeah, have, have you some, seen that? Uh, yeah, I, I have seen that. It looks really cool. And is that made of all metal, right? All metal. Yeah, yeah that looks awesome. It's that's, that's awesome that, figure. You could, you could, you take that to the head if somebody throws that at you, and you're going down. <laughs> like that's God. I got some weight to it. Well, yeah. I, hey man, like we were talking about, I got into the Bluefin booth. I think that's being sold through there. So yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a it's a legit figure. Like it's pretty awesome. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, uh, definitely some really cool exclusive the Mondo stuff. I, I might have to get something for myself while I'm looking for Scott. Uh, I didn't know that about that Hush one, but I have a lot of the Hush uh, issues, but I don't obviously have that cover. Yeah, that that's another good one. If you can sneak an extra one, my direction. That's a like <laughs> to have. The Detective Pikachu is a must have. Well, All right. speaking of, <laughs> speaking of prepare, so like so honestly, like so the, uh, once I saw yeah. that. Once I saw these posters, and that's what I was talking about preparing. So I actually bought an expandable like poster tube, like a hard poster tube um, that I said I can basically like tr transport these posters in. Um, Smart man. Yeah. Like. Yeah. So, so yeah. So those are the those, yeah, Scott. Those are the mailers. Like this, yeah, I got the mailers. I got a bunch of them. There's this thing that I'm talking about. It literally like I said it, it can expand from like like the little like print posters all the way up to like the full on like full size movie one sheet posters. Um, and so I'm like, I bought that. And then Scott, I know you, I know you bought some too. So I'm gonna do my plug for uh, for Shumi Nation right now. So shout out to Shumi. Uh, so for because we're actually going to fun days as well. And when you're going to fun day, it's like I said, like I said you, obviously you're walking away with some Funko Pops. So even though we didn't get into the Funko booth, we're walking away with some Funko Pops uh, from fun days. And so in order to protect those, like I said, you have to, you, you know, you got to slap in a protector. And what better protector than the ones at Shumi? So go to shumistore.com, enter code STS guys, save yourself 10%. Uh, like I said, I have a crap load of Shumi protectors. It's the best. 
It's the it's best. The best. <laughs> hey, Larry. Hey. Larry's back. So now we can actually go on and let's talk about. Well, hold on. Hold so on, wait, Larry, you said, oh, I forgot in the chat, you said you had, and it's been a week. So how have, has it been a week, Larry? I have one thing for it's been a week and uh, nerd crew actually reminded me about it. Jeremy and I haven't really talked about this yet, but Jeremy, what are your thoughts about these fugitive toys, mystery boxes with either the parks and rec, Andy Dwyer wearing a mouse rat shirt or the chase Johnny Karate. Johnny, yeah, Johnny Karate. No, okay. So Larry, we we talked about this. We did a little bit. Yeah. We did. A I don't even bit. know if you don't. You don't even. Know, <laughs> you don't even know, dude. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So you, like, I I don't even know all the details because they're a little sketch at this moment. But like, there's 500 Andy Dwyer pops, give or take. There's like 420 of the Mouse Rat shirt, and maybe like 80 something of the of the Johnny Karate, um, and Fugitive Toys. What was it? Thursday? Yeah, Thursday afternoon. Threw them up in these mystery boxes. Uh, there's a hundred dollar mystery box that you can get the Johnny Karate, and a twenty five dollar mystery box that you can get the Andy wearing the mouse rat T shirt. But, but now, as we said, it's not a guarantee. They're selling more oh. mystery boxes than those pops. Yeah. So they 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 put up. Somebody said it was a hundred of the hundred dollar one, and I think somebody said like two thousand of the twenty five dollar one. Right. But so, you don't know how you don't know how many are inserted into this round, and they've already said they're bringing them to San Diego, and they're bringing them to New York, and any other con that they're in between now and then too. So, so, so but so as we were talking though, so you're spending a hundred bucks to maybe get that pop, but we have no idea what else they're throwing in these mystery boxes, or whether it's even worth that, right? Like, have they brought up anything else that could potentially be in them? So the no, no, oh God, no. Um, so the only kind of good thing is uh, the hundred dollar one. They they did say that uh, you'll get a vaulted or rare pop or whatever with the value uh, of around ninety dollars. So that's not bad. No, that's, um, that's a good. Really, like, it's it's a pretty like yeah, you're throwing out a hundred bucks, <laughs> but it's a pretty low risk as long as you're going to get most of your money back. Yeah. Um, that's, so they see, went, that's what I'd be worried about is not getting back what it is like these mystery boxes tend to have to Jeremy you can back me up on this we've we've gone through the mystery box game quite a bit uh, a lot of times you're like I don't even think this is worth like the 30 bucks that I spent uh, on this box so, yeah. so true um, so but if I if I'm have the chance to get a $90 pop I said I don't feel I don't feel as bad so I, I think I'm in I think I think I'm in this game. I said, I said if I can get to the fugitive booth, I think I'm in. And dude, yep. they have to like. I shouldn't plug this so much, right? Like, it's going to be horrible. No one should go to the fugitive toys booth at San Diego <laughs> Comic Con. But no, but, Larry, but fugitive, Larry's gonna go. If I Larry's was fugitive going. toys, if like they sold these, they sold these mystery boxes on Thursday, right? They don't ship to August fifth, so that's like three, four weeks from now, whatever. Um, the first time anyone's going to have this Andy Pop in their hand is by going to the fugitive booth in San Diego. You think that they'd kind of overload these that way. They're making sure somebody goes on social media and be like, Hey, check out this cool pop. I got just to build the hype around their future mystery. Boxes. I got Johnny karate. Yeah, exactly. So Jeremy's right. Fugitive toys is like going to be one of my first stops. I already bought a hundred dollar mystery box online. So, uh, so how many, how many more are you going for? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Larry. At least one. We, we talked about how ridiculous <laughs> this is. Dude, we I made did, mention of this on himself. Thursday. I know. Then himself. I drove home. I, right, before I got home, I got the, the Twitter alert that the boxes were up. I pulled over the side of the road. I saw a guaranteed $90 value. I didn't even realize what I was buying. I didn't know you couldn't get the mouse rat <laughs> one in it. I, but I pulled the trigger. It sold out in what, like four minutes? I texted Jeremy like, hey, dude, these fugitive bucks are up. I went back to look and they were sold out. Oh it was God. that fast. Dang. So I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll be buying one. Like, re remember like an episode or two ago and I was like, oh, I really want to be Parks Rec complete. Like that's out the window. There's there's no chance because like people are speculating uh, how much this these Andy Pops are going to be worth. I think everything I've seen on Reddit is super low. Uh, like that 96, like the one that's less than 100, it's going to be like a thousand dollar pop, easy. Yeah, that's stupid gold hopper pop. 
Yeah, um, thousands, right? Yeah, it's, 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 it's worth a couple thousand, right? Jeez. Yeah, there's 40. And, and, there, and there's 40 of that. So it's at least a thousand dollar pop. Well, and I think just because is, I think this franchise has a has a more wide, like I said, a wider following too than just basically a stupid gold repaint of a hopper. It, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Like but Stranger just, Things is super popular. It, yeah. But the fact that it's kind of a unique character and it's not just gas yeah, spray painted gold. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. For sure. It's a so, unique mold. It's a it's a it's a unique mold for this limited figure. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? That you know what's got. Nuts. Be, I think the deciding factor on whether or not I'm going all in on these fugitive boxes was not getting into the Funko booth. <laughs> right. So I'm not that, spending that money. That. I got to buy something. So guess what, fugitive toys, as long as I get a shot, because I don't know how many of these boxes they're going to have, it's probably not going to be that many. Uh, I, I think I got to go for it. Yeah, I mean, it's worth a shot, right? Yeah, and whatever. Like you said, you have to kind of pivot and move sometimes with your plans based on what STC throws at you. Yeah. And so you, that's, that's and, part of the prep. All right. So you know what I'm thinking though. So, so, so if, if we're going for these boxes and we do get them, I mean, I'm, I'm throwing out there now, live unboxing. Oh yeah, from from the floor. We're not even from making it back to the hotel, yeah. man. Oh yeah, do a live stream right on the floor when you right get on the yeah. floor. So like, you'll either see happiness from Larry or, or, or utter destruction. Yeah. Or I'm going to chuck soul. my ninety dollar pop across the. <laughs> the floor, I fuck this. This is really sad, but I'm almost kind of hoping to see just like. <laughs> oh, don't it, say it's that. It's going to be like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory when he opens his candy bar and he he sure is the winner, and it's not, and he's just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he just I, starts I'm kind of hoping it. for that. It's possible, man. But yes, there will be an unboxing video at least when I get the one. Uh, right, I got one on the way. It, sometime in August, there'll at least be a Fugitive Toys hundred dollar mystery box right. unboxing video I, I, on our YouTube channel. I'm, I'm just gonna throw this out there now. So, what if you are the sole owner of two? <laughs> two. <laughs> <laughs> that would be oh, crazy. Damn. That yeah. would be crazy. He would own it, own the Funko world. Well, the, and the funny thing is, I think I know Larry enough. I don't even think he'd get rid of them. Nope. I think I think he I think he would keep both. I think he he'd would probably both. open one up. <laughs> I don't think just to that piss up. people off yeah um hey look at know, this you know what good guy larry knows another big parks and rec fan and he would probably hook that person up so i know who that is yeah as as i would expect they would do for me if they got yeah. to so fair yeah. so that speak, would be so, a super mega uh haul larry right. if you got that rare pop at stcc speaking of super, super mega <laughs> and speaking of pops we still have a really amazing giveaway going on right guys the super we mega do. stranger things prize pack giveaway wait, wait did you say super mega stranger things prize pack giveaway i think, I think he, he said super mega stranger things prize pack giveaway i think he did say super mega stranger things prize pack giveaway I did say Super Mega Stranger Things prize pack giveaway. This one's a tongue twister. <laughs> it is. It is. They all are. <laughs> entered, you're missing out. Daily entries are available, and the entries yes. just continue to keep going up. STSGuide.fun yeah. is where you want to enter. And get yourself, get yourself a bunch of pops, two signatures, and some other random Stranger Things shit that we can find. What? Wait. wait. Yeah, wait. You want to know what you can win? You can win that. Gade Meta's Razo. Yeah, Gade so, Meta's Razo. So, so, hey, hey, no, and, and, and to make a certain somebody happy, it's got a certificate. Ooh, JSA. It's JSA certified. JSA it certified. does. That that's really like ups the, the value for me. That's like one of the top authentication <laughs> services around. You could also get this Billy Bobby Brown signed mm. 8 by 10 photo. It's not JSA, but it comes with a hologram from the guys who put on Phoenix Comic Con. That ain't too bad. Square and it. that's a pretty relevant picture because if you watch season three, there's flashbacks to that exact scene. Yeah, I, I thought it was cool. quite quite amazing that that exact scene was in there. Like, that's the one that we have signed. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It, it lined up actually perfectly. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> we yeah. didn't plan that, and that's right? amazing. What a way to make our, our season one photo relevant to season three. Yeah. Thank you, Duffer Brothers. All right. But yeah, you got yeah. five other pops. You got an, You got what? Three eleven pops, including the one with uh, the electrodes that's from that photo. I got a Scoops Ahoy Steve. There is Dustin from the Snowball Dance. Yeah, I get five pops. That's sixth pop signed by Dustin and the 8x10. 
plus this hopper badge, what? plus whatever Stranger Things crap we can throw prop, in. Prop replica hopper badge. It's pretty boom. This is a super mega giveaway. And there's already 3,020 entries. There's only 13 days remaining. So if you haven't already joined, you should really get on it because the daily entries are what have you know people have won from on our last few giveaways. It really True. pays off. And we're going to be at STCC. If you guys see us, we'll give you a secret code for 50 points. If you see us at STCC, we'll give you a secret code. You enter it, you get 50 points. You're also going to get our exclusive STS Guys pin uh, at Comic Con. So we showed that a couple episodes ago. Episodes Two episodes ago. ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're going to give you all kinds of STS Guys swag. We got cards, we got stickers, we got fridge magnets. I mean, we're going to get you all oh, STS Guys up. You're going to be swagged beyond imagination. Yep. Um, <laughs> you know what? Yeah. I, you know what's impressive though? Like I said, I said right before I said I jumped on the stream. Um, good work on the design, guys, of the SDCC flyer. I will be getting those printed up here very soon. So, so we can't show the flyer on the stream, but I thought I'd have to say kudos to the guys. And like, you know, it's 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 a good flyer. I like it. Uh flyer update, Scott. I got it figured out. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk after this. Yeah, that's fine. We'll Dude, get you it. don't even know. Like the flyer's been a mess, Jeremy. Like I made a couple versions and it. Turned oh, out they like turned crap. out awful. <laughs> they were they were <laughs> <But> not good. <laughs> it's taken me like all week, but I finally figured it out today. I've got a nice high res, good printable version. It's going to be on bright STS guys green paper. And like Nate said, you're going to get that code on the back that we can get your 50 bonus entries. If there's already 3,000 entries, like you need those 50 bonus entries. So come find us go home with a bunch of stuff and hopefully win our super mega stranger things prize pack giveaway. Perfect. It's now, the best. It's, it's the, the best. best. <laughs> now, speaking of Comic-Con, yes. Marvel is going to be unveiling huh? their plans for the next phase Ooh. of of movies. Seems like it. See like that that's kind of the plan. But they had their last movie of the current phase what a week and a half ago that came out we yeah. still need to talk about that fucking movie, and that is Spider-Man: Far From Home. Yeah, I right. know all of us have actually gotten a chance to see it. I just saw it today. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. which nice. I am actually surprised, Jeremy, that you waited that long to see a Spider-Man movie. Me just, too. just to be fair, yeah, honestly, like I said, I've just been like so preoccupied with like other things going on, and so it's just I just haven't had a chance, and I finally got a chance to I got finally got some free time today, and I am super excited to talk about this movie. Yeah. So yeah, I, I said, and I feel vindicated for an end credit scene for. <laughs> oh no! So that's the thing we got to talk about. I, I, there's that specific well, scene. Well, what are we talking about? Oh, we're gonna go straight into it. No, so let's go through. Did, yeah, we're what gonna, is the name of the movie here? Yeah. Go, I, I fucking said Spider Man Far From Home. Oh, like I go. said it earlier. <laughs> so. Um, spoiler that, alert! Spoiler alert for sure. Spoiler alert! Uh, it's been out long enough. You better like if you're gonna see it, you're gonna see it. Um, uh, the scene that Jeremy is talking about, I w was a scene where I audibly was like, "Yes!" Like yeah, I like yelled in the theater. It was amazing. We'll talk about that one later. I want to start with ratings, though. I just want to say, "Fucking told you guys." <laughs> what I I was uh, with this movie too. What? Keep in mind, I, I said that. that say, I just want to say, I told you so. That, uh, we definitely whole, gonna have to have a discussion. Yeah, the yeah, whole. Do the oh, rankings, it's a multiverse. I got it's a multiverse. It. multiverse. Oh, he's a fucking liar. Um, <laughs> as, as it was the case. But let's go around with ratings to start with. What does everybody rate it at? Let's start with uh, Larry. Let's start with you because you're always the uh, uh, putting the lower Larry in the one. Spot. Hmm. And I think it's going to be the case with this one. First up, Larry, eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, I, I get to talk first, so I get to say all the things. Um, so real quick, like I, I know we were all a little concerned that the trailer showed too much, but right on from the first scene, it was apparent that the trailer only showed like the first part of the movie, uh, which was cool. Um, like second part was good. I enjoyed it. I thought Jake Gyllenhaal uh, and Mysterio was a gr pretty good villain. Um, so I liked all that, I liked the special effects, liked all the Spider-Man swinging scenes. They've really upped their, uh, quality on a lot of those effects and stuff. So again, awesome. Uh, as far as the like ranking, it's, dude, it's hard because out of five, come on, Larry. Yeah. Hold on. So I, I 
preface. <laughs> so, like, it's hard being the first MCU movie after uh, Endgame because Endgame was so good, and Far From Home is not Endgame. So I'm going to give it a three out of five. It's good. Middle of the road. Nice. It's, it's all right. All right, who's next, Scott? L- L- Nate, let's go with you yeah. since you just chimed in. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I kind of agree with Larry on this one. Um, it's hard to follow up Endgame. Uh, Endgame was so good. And I do like Spider-Man, but there's just some things about Far From Home that didn't really hit home for me. Um, I, I think I like Homecoming better. I don't think that's the popular opinion. I think, I don't know. From what yeah. I've seen, most people prefer Far From Home. According but, to Funkos with Chris in the chat, Far From Home is the superior movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it was good. It was just, uh, I don't know, maybe it was the Mysterio story that was so close to the comics, which one thing I did like, but it also made the movie seem very predictable for me. Like there was no real big surprises. Like, okay, the elementals are fake. This guy's been lying the whole time. Everybody fell for it. Now he has a redemption story. I mean, it was all played out very well. It just felt a little predictable. So long story short, I'm going to go three out of five. I'm going to agree with Larry on this one. Three wow. out of five. All right. Uh, All right. Jeremy? Since you Jer- no, so Jeremy is the, the one to see it recently, and he is the biggest Spider-Man fan out of all of us. I want him to go last, All so right. I'm going to jump guys? in. So I actually, uh, I'll say to you guys, I actually very much enjoyed the movie. Um, I think they did a really good job with Mysterio, uh, being that instead of being just a person that's good at special effects bringing in a bunch of people from like scorned Stark employees so that Mysterio isn't a single person. It is a group of people working together. Um, I think that was one of the things that, that really stuck with me that they did a really good job of how do you make that character normal? Exactly. It was a cool way to make it like modern and updated. You know how like they tried to make Electro like blue, so he's not wearing that crazy yellow headdress thing. Like, yeah, it made it it, it made it uh, believable. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, I did have a little bit of issue. I really felt that the MJ, who's not MJ, uh, <laughs> she's MJ. She's not that MJ. She's not that MJ, but she is an MJ. Uh, I I did think that the kind of love story aspect of it was a little forced like it 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 didn't feel natural and i know that they had to try to get that out there because everyone was expecting it um but it it didn't feel like it flowed like in the best way like uh, too much stuff it it It, It it tried to squeeze it in and i think that they they could have found a more like organic way to to introduce that um maybe start with her being like, yeah, I know you're Spider-Man. Like I figured it out and then kind of go from them like yeah. bonding over that to then become a couple versus it being like, oh, I want to date her and like him having trouble with it. Dude, uh, he, he didn't even put much up any fight about that. She's like, I no. think you're Spider-Man. He's like, no, I'm not. I think you're Spider-Man. Yeah. You, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm I am. okay yeah, yeah. Like yep. they should have played that out a little bit more. Yeah, like it, it was a little bit forced for me, but outside of that, like I think they did a really, really good job with it um, and kind of kept a lot of the stuff in. And yeah, the, the two... It, it's really rare for me to say that both end credit scenes blew my mind, but both end credit scenes of this movie blew my mind. Yeah, best... And, the best. I'm going to go ahead and say best end credit scenes of any MCU movie. Yeah, both of them like were the best the yeah. top one and two, okay. right? Uh, so I'm going to go a little bit higher than you. I'm giving that four four point two five out of five is what I'm 4. giving 4. that movie. 5. Yeah, I'm trying to go like a little bit. Like it's a little bit better than a four, but not quite a four and a half for me. So, All right. but All like right, Jeremy, we'll, we'll we'll start with four. So yeah, Jeremy. All right, you just saw it. What are your thoughts? thoughts? It's it's fresh in my mind, and so I'm going to give my rating right away. I'm not, I'm not, so that way I, I can explain why. So I thought it was really good. Um, I'm going actually a three and a half. Um, okay. So I'm a little bit lower on this movie. Um, not, not for the fact that it wasn't good. Uh, it's, I, I, there's a lot of things that, that hit really high notes for me with this movie. I said, I, I like that they're keeping it. They're not trying to cram too much into these movies. Like I said, I, I like that they was Mysterio was the villain 
and that was it. And I like that they didn't try to cram. Like they, they, they don't do that that whole downfall of every single superhero movie out there is where they try to cram too much into this. I, I, I really I really like that. that I Everyone was really worried that Chameleon was going to show up. And after about halfway through the movie, I, I really thought, we don't need another villain. Like, like I really hope they don't try to cram something well, else. In and, and I was kind of hoping that he would actually show up, but like not be like any type of part of the story it's just literally just a flash of yeah. like, this, is, I, this is a per- this is the person so uh, so my original thought was i was hoping that mysterio wouldn't be found out to be a fraud until the very end and he would actually help them fight chameleon that that was kind of like my hope yeah now so <laughs> I said the, the the things I, I didn't like i said I, the the love story arc of it, like I said, I think I literally, so you guys took the words out of my mouth. I think that I think it was I think it was a little forced, and I think that so, and I think it's because they didn't focus on MJ nearly as much in in Homecoming as they did did in, it did in this movie, and so you can tell in this movie they tried to basically get the audience like they tried to force MJ down the audience's throat a little bit, yeah, that, and that's what I was saying. Like it's such really, a forced thing. To really yeah. get her inter- to basically really get her attached to the audience, yeah. like, and you, you can tell that she's going to play some type of part when when the third movie comes out. I, well, it I, almost I, does I, the counter opposite though, because it yeah. makes me like, ah, oh, man, I don't, like I don't like this character. As yeah, much. yeah, and, it's. And that, I really think it's their way of saying like, we all know you want Mary Jane Watson. You're not going to get Mary Jane Watson, but we have this MJ, and just <laughs> push that one like in front of everybody this is your mj for the mcu hold on does anybody even know what mj stands for michelle jones i don't even remember you're just I guessing think, you don't know no, no her name they didn't michelle talk about something. it did they uh, no, it, in this it, movie they didn't talk about it they didn't at the one. end of the last one she said her first name is michelle but everyone calls yeah. her mj yeah. so i think it's uh, yeah i would have to see because she is actually a character in, oh, Chris, uh, Chris says uh, Michelle Jones. Yeah, so okay, I right. was right, Michelle Jones. Yeah, all right. So whatever. yeah, so she is an official <laughs> comic book character, but yeah, it's she was okay. Uh, but you guys are right. Like, t- does this lead to the after credit scenes? No, no. no so, can we talk no, about, no, talk about more right. of the the, the in movie stuff real quick first? Okay, okay. What do you got? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna save the end credit stuff for last because yeah. it's oh, so, that's a discussion on its own. So. Uh, how much you guys want to bet that we're going to have Fantastic Four announced during this MCU? Well, they kind of hinted at it with they the poster. A huge hint at it in, in, yeah. in this movie. Like, what was it? Yeah. I didn't catch it. So, so, so at the, at, at the it's very end credits. It, no, no, it doesn't even the end credits. It is. Yeah, no, it, yeah, you're right. No, it's at the very end when he does right after he does the selfie. Yeah. So he's swinging with he's he's he's, he's, he's swinging with M, M, MJ at the every point. He he lands, does the selfie, and then at the very very at the very back, you see a banner. It says one, two, three, and then a question mark, and it says, "Are you excited for what's coming next?" And they're each. You got a hint though, Jeremy, that each of those numbers is in a circle. Yeah, it's in a circle. Yeah, the, the Fantastic oh. Four circle. Yeah, Fantastic yeah. Four logo style. Yeah. yeah, so it's like one, two, three, and then the four, which would be the Fantastic Four logo, is missing. And it has the dot, dot, dot. Nice. Which I think means that Avengers Tower is going to become the Baxter Building. I think that's what they're building when he goes through it. That would that's be possible. cool. So uh, yeah. I, I'm, I think, I think I'm, I'm ready to plant my stake in the ground right now, and I think <laughs> one thing in, in case well, of is we'll, we'll, we'll get well, a they, and, Go ahead. They have to do something big, yeah. right? They can't just show up and be like, "Here's Black Panther two, here's Doctor Strange two, here's Black Widow two. Everything you guys already knew, we just haven't announced it yet. Right. That's not that exciting. There's got to be that oh my god moment no yeah. they'd be fantastic yeah. for and I, I think we'll even have some cast announcements of, of, yeah. of that would be cool of, yeah they, they, they can't bring bring off of just those sequels yeah they're gonna bring them out to the stage uh, uh basically who this is the uh, this is who the fantastic four are like it's 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 gonna be something huge uh, yeah, like, i think like you know the gym from the office huge <laughs> yeah they you know they're like dropping uh, the movie, and now everybody's talking about it. I think they did that on purpose. Like, have everybody talk about this movie, the little Easter eggs that we saw, and then SCCC dropped the big news. Yeah. Um, so I want to focus on a couple of story bits, if you guys don't mind. Yeah, yeah uh, let's, let's do it. One of them, Taps fan kind of brought up that I wanted to talk about is um, 
the way that Mysterio was a disgruntled employee, which is so much like the Iron Man movies that we've seen, you know, Iron Man two, uh, what Vanko or is, I don't know if I'm saying his name yeah. right. So his, he, his he, dad worked with Tony, right? Uh, he, you know, oh, stole yeah. and Iron Man three, that guy worked with Tony and Tony denied his idea. So he's a villain. They, that guy he, never yeah. really worked with Tony though. That guy, Tony well, just he was brushed trying to that guy him. off. Yeah. He was trying to right. sell him something and basically created this monster whatever yeah. but uh, it, first off so, honestly I, I will say the, the iron man 3 the bad guy if, if the rich billionaire doesn't give you time it does not mean that you become a like a, right. a super villain right oh, like yeah. that was the weakest <laughs> well, like it, one time tony stark said my idea was not good so i f- became evil well, and didn't he well, tell him to go? Didn't he tell him to go wait up on the roof for him, and he'd be right there? Yeah, he he think, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, and, a little like, bit. But, and also, like the Mandarin thing, like he had a team of people to create this whole idea of this character, and yeah. I felt like a lot of similarities with Mysterio. There, like, okay, he's a pissed off employee. They're trying to fill the shoes of Iron Man by making Spider Man, which is very evident in the movie. They, they, you know, really yeah. hint on that a lot. I think they're really trying to focus on. This is your new Iron Man. This is your new Iron Man. You know, he gave the glasses, the Edith glasses to to Spider-Man. Um, I, I still which, don't think it's going to be the new Iron Man. I think we're still going to get a new version of it. Like, somebody else is going to take up that mantle. Because we even see at the very end, Peter still doesn't want to be Iron Man. Right? Like, he, he wants to be Spider-Man. Right. And well, I and- think that that's another thing that kind of bothers me about the Iron Man aspect is that I feel like Spider-Man gets a lot of help in these movies. And in the comics, I felt like he was much more on his own. He had to figure out his problems. He had to create new ideas, new weapons, new gadgets. And in these movies, it's like, Hey, uh, come pick me up. Let's build a new suit together. And then we're going to go create a game plan and go fight the villain. Like it's just very convenient, which it's cool because it builds, it follows the MCU kind of, way they've done these movies, but it also sort of just bothers me because classic Spider-Man wasn't really like that. Yeah. How many suits has Spider-Man had since Tom Holland took over? It's a lot. Yeah, it is. Right? He, he just gets all, and now he just has unlimited access to all, all the Stark technology, apparently. Mm-hmm. Well, and then if you saw him even making the suits, like when he actually had to pull up all the stuff you have on Spider-Man, there, there was, was more pretty, comic suits. Yeah. There was yeah. more, there was more suits that were already pre-designed. Yeah, um, in in Stark's inventory, uh, so no, Nate, I, I get exactly what you're saying with, with that. I, I, I just think it was done way better, though. Like, just it was a believable group. Like bringing the dude that Obadiah Stane yells at in yeah. Iron Man One. It was clever. A, it was clever. Like you, like some of these people were in the other movies. Yeah, and it's and another it's Iron Man tie-in. You yeah, know, that like, kind of follows sure. with that. Right, and the multiple suits is another thing you guys just mentioned. Iron Man had so many multiple armors. You know, yeah. it's just there's so many similarities now that they're trying to build yeah. between these characters. It's kind of just weird though, because I feel like they're taking away what Spider Man really classically is, yeah. and now they're making him like this Iron Spider. Well, to- Tobey Maguire Spider Man only needed one suit for three movies. Well, and I Te- here's- technically he had two, Larry. Yeah, I know the black one. We don't talk about. Yeah, he, he had the. Yeah. yeah, jazz one. Yeah, yeah. And so, so I, I totally get it, Nate. But at the same point in time, I think, I think the thing, from 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 my perspective, it's I think this is still the little kid aspect. Like I said, I said this is this is the even even though Toby Maguire was supposed to be in high school, that that to me it was a thirty year old man. I didn't believe the, the high school and and totally and the, the kid aspect of him. Like Tom Holland, like I said. I believe in him as like I said the kid it's, Spider-Man, and yeah. he still is a child, and he's super yeah. he's super immature. And if he and he and if he wasn't, mature, and that's like I think that's why I said I like these these villains that have been in these Spider-Man movies is because they haven't been like super huge bads. They've been believable bad guys that this like I said this this character and this superhero at his time and this time in his life that he could, he could actually defeat. Um, well, and you think like that's a yeah great point. If if you're an employee and you're like you create this awesome like hologram technology, and the person in charge of the company is like, I'm gonna call it Barf, like <laughs> you'd be and like 
And if you speak up Pretty about it, you're going to get fired. Like, at a certain point, you'd be like, yeah, fuck that guy, too. Like, <laughs> like I would 100% hate my boss if he was like, this awesome thing you created, I'm going to give it a shitty name and then never use it again. Yeah. So, so I, I, Go ahead. No, you go. I was just going to say, I agree with uh, that point that Jeremy brought up. One thing they really do nail is the young factor of Spider-Man. Like, he definitely feels like a guy that doesn't really... He's not sure of himself, and that's what's cool about these movies. You kind of see him develop yeah. into a more confident superhero. Cool. See, that was going to be my point. So thank you for the segue. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that's perfect. So yeah, like great. That's what I was going to say. He, he's grown, right? When he first starts fighting Mysterio, and Mysterio's throwing him uh, with all these this fake world, right? He's messing with reality, and Peter doesn't know what to do. But then when he goes back to fight him again, he uses his Peter tingle, and he's able to defeat <laughs> the bad guy. I, I do I do love uh, the a, a calling it the Peter Tingle. B the fact that we actually get like him tr using and trusting his spider sense. I think that yeah. was a great addition to it that it's That was really cool. That you're like, oh, like they they've thrown hints at it, right? Like his hair standing up on his arm when the in uh, Infinity War and everything. Um it, but having him actually be able to like explain like Oh yeah, it's this weird feeling I get, and this whole aspect, and then at the end, using it to like see through the, uh, um, the we'll say holograms, right? Illusions, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Um, that was that was amazing for me, is to see like he's finally using his spider sense. Yeah, he was totally overpowered in that first battle, but right, he's figured things out. Yeah, he got a better suit, whatever. But like, you can see him develop as a hero, which was kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, because he, mm -hmm. he starts to then develop strategy and then and, and yeah. believe in himself in regards to like, hey, you know what, I I I know I can do this, and but and then this is the this is what I need in order to do this. So, for sure. Um, what was the other thing I wanted to talk about? I can't think of it now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, overall, I mean, I thought Mysterio was cool, and I was I was one. I want to focus on the combat a little bit. Like, I was really interested to see how they're going to make Mysterio a good fight against Spider-Man. And uh, so were the drones that he was using were the same ones that he had acquired from Edith later on, or was it like different drones at I the beginning? I, I think he was using like a variation. It was supposed to be a variation, right? And just the yeah. Edith drones could use that same technology, right? So, but uh, as I you bring up the thing, like the fight scenes with Mysterio and how they handled that was really great. Mm -hmm. Like you said, like he's changing around the, the room and it, you have a believable, right? We've seen mm -hmm. that technology used. So we see it again, that how it works, that it changes the room. And, you know, he thinks it's a floor or a, a way down and it just ends up being a floor that he hits. And yeah, yeah. You know, he that sees this whole the whole sequence where Mysterio yeah. has him in that, that, that abandoned yeah. building was amazing. Like the zombie Iron Man uh, oh, that yeah. comes out, and then mm -hmm. the whole like I kill Nick Fury, and then he thinks he wins, and then the Nick Fury that he thinks it is like turns yeah. out to be Mysterio. Like it was a really interesting way to create like a weakness for yeah. Spider Man. Well, it's, it's it's that scene, and honestly, one of the other scenes I loved is him choreographing. Basically, the, the final fight scene. Yeah. Right? Where he's like, here's how we're going to do it. And then you see that that actual path happen in again. Like, like I said, it, it's the fact that it's a group of people that have to get together to make everything happen, I think, is is equally as important as just the, the fight scenes. Like, just because Jake Chinhall maybe is gone... Uh, you can have anybody else step up and you could, you know, no one else was found out. You have that yeah, other entire true. group of people that could step in to be Mysterio. So there is Mysterio is yeah. not gone. No, that's yeah. a cool way to keep, uh, keep the villain around. Like you said, Jake Gyllenhaal may or may not be dead, but well, and then there's Mysterio like, lives on. Well, then there was that, there's that quick flash scene. So if you remember the guy that was doing the computer stuff, he did like a quick download of something. I, I think that leads that what he downloads is what leads into uh, the end credit scene that we'll talk about here shortly. Oh, just talk about it. Okay, so so <laughs> let's go through. So we all know about the movie we talked about. It. We all liked it. It's good. Go fucking see it. Like, there's the, not... 
What was the best part of the movie, Scott? So honestly, the best part of the movie was seeing J.K. Simmons show back up as J- yes. Jonah Jameson yeah. on screen bitching about Spider Man. Like that was such a cool Easter egg. There is no JJ other than J.K. Simmons, and the fact that they got him to come back and be JJ again was amazing. Well, I, I like the fact that they said they didn't make him the editor of a newspaper, but they made him basically yeah. like the Spider-Man video game, where they basically made him the the the, the announcer of of the of the website. He, also, well, he well he's like um, he's a radio yeah he's a radio show. So so in the in the game he's a radio show, and this one yeah. he's like uh, yeah that, like Taps fan says he's like Alex Jones, or if you think of uh, uh, what's the fuck it, I'll do it myself like. Guy, um, the dude from Fox News. What? Uh, yeah, yeah, like whatever his name Bill is. Bill O'Reilly. Like, Bill That's O'Reilly. Right. Yeah, he's yeah. like a Bill. He's like a Bill O'Reilly or an Alex Jones, right? He has his own little Daily Bugle TV show, and he is the anchor, which Again, I mod- think fits a really good version of JJ for a modern time. Yeah, exactly. You're modernizing like some of the kind of oldish technologies from like the 60s, 70s, or 80s, right? He couldn't be a newspaper editor. Nobody reads newspapers anymore. What if he was a podcaster? Exactly. <laughs> That's basically what he was in the game, dude. He's like a like, vlogger, right? Like yeah. you gotta do video, but yeah, it's it's cool. He's he's got the TV show. So yeah. that having him show up is amazing. And then having it be the video where he's accused of causing everything in London. And then they drop his name at the end of it. It's even better. Yeah. Name and picture just in case everyone was like, there could be multiple Peter Parkers. (laughs) He, they dropped that one. Like you just think like he's finally coming into his own as a superhero. And we have Spider-Man as this alter ego. And that gets just shattered immediately. And I think that's, it makes me want to see what's going to come next for that character. Mm-hmm. Well, dude, I mean, if Peter's out, they got to go after MJ. Right. That's she was part of the next one. Right. Cool. Like, and Aunt May. Like, they, they have the targets. whole, they could do the whole Aunt May's death. I really yeah. hope they don't go one more day. Yeah. Or yeah, I'm hoping with it. Yeah. Like, and his friends were actually part of the story a lot. Like, they're always in trouble. He's always saving his friends. So it seems like they always have like that piece of him readily apparent, like, hey, there's family and people that he cares about. So now yeah. I think that's even going to be a bigger thing that everybody knows who he is. To be fair, though, I did rewatch Homecoming, and Ned is not subtle in him asking questions to Peter during that movie. Like, I rewatched that and was like, dude, Ned is like legitimately like, can you do this? Like, yelling <laughs> while they're doing sit ups in gym class. And it's like, Everyone in the gym class knows that Sp- Peter has some yeah. special power. Like they may not know he's Spider Man, but they're, they're like at least they're going to be like, "Why was he asking if he can like lift a bus?" Like, That's it's true. like like there's a lot more people that should know Peter is Spider Man just because Ned is loud as fuck. Ned's um, one of the worst best friends. Yeah, he is the worst best friend to know you have a power. Can Can I just say how lame it is that uh, apparently Peter and all of his friends. Did like got dusted or whatever because they all come back and they're the same age. That was way too convenient too. Yeah, I, I right, think- Flash, MJ, Ned. They, they apparently they all did. I did like the we didn't touch on this yet. I did like the explanation at the beginning with like the, the high school news. Oh, that, that, that was, was funny. Cool. That I did funny. love the guy that's like my younger brother is now older than me. Like what <laughs> yeah, the hell's up with yeah. that? Right. Uh, well, they, and they just. Lit. And it's funny, yeah. How how casual they just make it. Like oh, it's the blip. It's like a funny yeah. joke now. You know, they're making fun of the fact that people are older. It, it's weird how they just kind of dismissed it right in the beginning. I, I still have my question, though, because this this I, I asked this during Endgame, and you guys were like, oh, I wonder how that happens. So it shows the marching band, right, that blipped out, and then they pop oh, yeah. back in during the, the, the game, which means you, you show back up where you were, like, disappeared at, yeah. the, the spot you were dusted, right? What still happens to people that were on planes? 
Like, do they just show up in that plane? <laughs> and if and if there's somebody in the seat, like, how does that work? Does somebody just show up, like, in well, your lap, or are you now in somebody's lap? Well, and there's no way then, though, because it's been yeah, five or just, years. Or do you just yeah. like, and like, yeah, planes probably got retired. Like, do you just no? You don't show up to where like, the plane is. You show up to where you were in the physical yeah. space. And yeah. That plane's not there anymore, so you're yeah, falling like, to your death. Uh, so there's like, yeah, like instant like, death right when people I have, come back. Yeah. I have a lot of questions about that now. I'm like, yeah, like there's planes or like people like in moving vehicles. Like there's, there's a lot of questions. I uh, should have added the caveat to the snap, like put everybody on the ground. Yeah. I don't know if they did that, but we'll, find <laughs> I don't think we'll they see did. What, what the Hulk thought about when he did that. <laughs> uh, so there's that one, but we got to talk because Jeremy, there's yeah, a Jeremy. second, there's a second end credit scene. You and I called this a long time ago. But it's almost inverted, right? Yeah. Like they they changed it on us. So yeah, I, I do got to give. We're giving. We're getting secret invasion. I do have to give credit to Jeremy on this one. He's been calling secret invasion for a long time. I don't know if this is technically secret invasion, but it yeah. definitely felt like it when they first showed the two. Until we knew that they were talking to Fury. Well, right. Well, even I said even so. I said, the, the, you see all the scrolls he was with on the thing. I said I said they're they're preparing for something. <laughs> like yeah. right. Like so, so I, I, I so, think what he's making is sword, right? And they're they're leading up to that. But I, I think it's interesting that now we're getting a secret invasion, but it's not that the scrolls are invading. But if you pay attention to that first scene, they say that they're sleeper uh Cree cells. Mm-hmm. On Earth, so now we're getting the potential that the Kree may be people that are in power and trying to use that to take over Earth, and we might actually have the Scrolls as good guys in this one. Well, which we we said I a while ago, it's interesting. We said a while ago there still could be good Scrolls and bad Scrolls. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. But they all don't have to be good. Yeah, I I, I think the MCU is really trying to set because I mean you have the MCU movies and then the Agents of Shield. It's really setting up that the Kree are just horrible, awful yeah. creatures. Yeah. Well, but, and I, th- I think, like I said, it's just, like I said, I think, uh, thing, things are, things just lined up in, in this movie. Like I said, those, those, those end credit scenes set up way more than, in, like I said, to, to our, to our point earlier, they set up way more than any other movie that, that that's been up, that's been up before. Oh, yeah. Um, and then plus, I said, now I said, with this, I said, with the, hey, you know what? The scrolls are still a thing. Like I said, it, it brings the scrolls back into relevance. The scrolls are still a thing in the MCU. They're, they're, like mm-hmm. said, they bring them back. They bring them back <laughs> because like I said they, they they're going to be involved in another thing. So we also have this the, the the tease about the Fantastic Four. So I think the big bad of Fantastic Four is actually going to probably be Super Scroll, and I think that's when we're probably going to get our first tease of these quote unquote bad scrolls. I, see, I really think that they're going to still bank on. The Cree, I I really think because then you have still a bad guy for Captain Marvel, you can still have bad guys. I mean, you have Cree with powers, right? You have like the version like Yon Rog and all them that are the non blue skinned like advanced Cree. You could still bring them in and have a super scroll, but have it be a Cree with their powers instead. Like they've shown that the you know the Supreme intelligence can give powers or design yeah. somebody. So what if they make a person that has the same scroll and basically their version of creating that Cree is what p- it creates the wave that gives the fantastic four each of those powers. Uh, like, I, I really I, think I, that it might be, we don't get shapeshifters. It's Cree bad guys that are kind of infiltrating the government, whatever it may be, I said. I, I think. I think. I think we're gonna get our secret invasion. And we, think, we're we're still getting a secret invasion, I but think, I think. I think this. I think this. Con, I think this confirms it. Like I said, just like I said, there's. there's, there's well, <laughs> well, for this. Right. So, so what this does is this gets rid of the idea because they tried to do the whole Agent Shield life model decoy right of all the people, and that was not a good storyline at all. So having it turn out that instead of life model decoys, we're just using scrolls for basically that exact process. Like, I think that uh, we, we can kind of have a, a few different storylines, but yeah, we get secret invasion, but it's like an inverted version. And I really like where they're going with it. Cause it's, 
you get to tell the story from the comics, but it's not the same story from the comics, right? Like Mysterio was great, but it was the comic book version of Mysterio. It's not a like everyone's like, oh, this Mysterio might actually have powers. No, he didn't. It's the comic book version. So what if we get a secret evasion that's not exactly like the comic books? I think that is going to be interesting. Just, just like we got a Civil War that wasn't really anything like the comic books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seems like. And so everyone was like, like, oh, I know it's going to happen because of the Civil War thing. Like, yeah. and it turned it on its head. Like, I, I really th- like that they're going a different v- direction with it in the MCU than they did in the comics, but still taking that inspiration. And I really want to see where they're going with it. Yeah. I do love how the MCU does use these classic comic stories. Sometimes a pretty one for one, like Mysterio, I thought was really accurate, but then other times it's like, Hey, I think I know this story. And then it just totally changes it. Yeah. So I, I, that adds a lot to the storytelling and it really adds a lot to like the excitement of man, what, what could they do with this? And yeah, you guys are right. They've been focusing a lot on the scrolls and their involvement in the MCU going forward. But I think they've been focusing a lot on them being kind of misunderstood and that the fa- they are working with like them inferior our pals. Yeah. Yeah, so right? that's the whole the whole so, thing is they're good guys. So answer me this. What was Nick Fury doing? I I really think he's building Sword, which is like the I don't know what that gal- is. It's the galactic version or universal version of of it's shield shield shield, it's shield, but, shield in space. It, yeah, it's shield, shield in space. Okay. So multiple planets and different groups of people are all part all of right. sword. That makes sense, right? Because that's so it's kind of like what Captain Marvel's doing, right? She can't be busy on Earth because she's out protecting the galaxy. It's kind of it's kind of like that. Yeah, so she exactly. could be part so, of it. Which so. And then there's the whole, uh, oh, God, what was it that, that Fury was technically in the comics where he he was uh, the whole, like, faceless person behind the, the universe keeping everything in check? There, it was a bad storyline. Jeremy, I know you, you know what I'm talking about, where you find out that, like, he was the one that would, like, overthrow people. I, I, I don't remember. I can't remember the the name of it, but he yeah. There's this whole thing where there's like Nick Fury for the longest time has been this secret agent person for the universe and was actually like creating coups on other planets while he was also like being the Nick Fury on Earth. So they're I think they're trying to lead into that type of storyline that he all this time he has been in space. I did like the fact that he played himself as Nick Fury different for this movie. Because yeah. when I started thinking it back, back to it, I was like, uh, that was really weird. Like, he had some weird, like, emotional outbursts that was different for the character that he's played so far. Yeah, I didn't really like him. Yeah, like, he, he was, was okay. he yeah. was different in this right? one. And like, what, what, was it, different. Like, what was another uh, movie where he was, like, a major character, The Winter Soldier? I, yeah, I liked him in the Winter Soldier a lot more than this. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a similar role. Yeah. In this one where he like yells at Spider-Man for not being hero-y enough, uh, yeah. I think that was a point where I was like, that does not seem like that would be a Nick Fury thing to yeah. do. And then come to find out that it, it yeah. wasn't Nick Fury. Um, it made a lot more sense at the end where you're like, oh, that is a whole <laughs> different character. <laughs> Ever since he got unsnapped, he's been somewhere else. Yeah. Like, oh, oh. Oh, I get it now. Scrolls, man. They'd be, they're back. They're so back. what if so do you think any of the other characters that we know might be scrolls? Was the Tony Stark who did the snap in Endgame? Was he a scroll? So real I Tony know, isn't I dead? Know that, I know that's a that's a that's a fan theory that's going on around right now. Because I actually I was yeah. reading that one on Reddit. Um, I don't think that I don't I don't think that's the case. Um, Black Widow. I think Black Widow could possibly be. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, hey, just so you know, uh, Focus with Chris brings up. He says, "I can't remember. Was it the original Sin comic? Yeah, yeah. You find out that Nick Fury has been this person or this role in the universe in the original Sin comic. I just can't remember what they call him. It's like uh, the person on the wall or something like that. Like no, the it's." Something like eyes on the wall. I, I cannot remember. Larry, to, to your point, I think I, I think 
I think I think Black Widow can could potentially be a scroll. Um, I, I I think there's. You think there's still so was the well, one that committed the, suicide? Was that uh, a scroll or is that the original Black Widow? And do we have Black Widow come back as a scroll or is it the well, original? How does that work though? Like, it d- didn't have to be somebody who Clint would have loved. But like, he would have scroll. He, he didn't love the scroll. But and he, when he, died, he he would have thought idea. that was her. Like he had no yeah, idea that it was anybody does. different. But she would have known that she wasn't the real Scarlet. Yeah. It, but it doesn't matter. And when she it, died, it, it, the it, it, person it, it, who's still alive but, is alive that matters. No, it should matter for both because there has to be should, some kind yeah. of valid connection there. It, but yeah. they did have a valid connection. Like it depends well, on. They could say like, "Oh, this entire time she's been a scroll." So the one that he knows potentially is a scroll the whole time. Sure. I'm gonna have to agree with Clint on this one. I think the people that died in Endgame are dead for good. I don't think. I think that back. if Black Widow was a scroll, like when she hit the ground. <laughs> Right when she splatted, <laughs> like when she have turned, when she have revealed her. No, I, I think she, uh, oh, here, I think she's coming back as a scroll. Oh, I think she's. I think that would, yeah. as I like the, off, she, She'll show back up. I like the alternate timeline Black Widow better. Like right, it's like she's like like how Gamora is still going to be around. Like somehow, I, I like the idea of they go back in time and get Black Widow and when they need her or something honestly, like that. I still want a second black widow that's not natasha that shows up (coughs) (laughs) (laughs) scott's all choked up he's all choked up (laughs) Uh, but we get like flashbacks to natasha sure (laughs) i'm dying here (laughs) (laughs) oh poor scott no i i I, I honestly like i said it's a if if anything i think I think we'll see more pivotal figures go up as scrolls. Somebody has to. Somebody has to now. Like so, it, it, yeah. it, now that this permanently sets the, set the stage for it. Yeah. yeah. Well, because I think that he can't have Black Widow just show back up as a scroll. Because once they need something to base it off of to turn into, right? right? You have so to you, see her or touch her, or however that works. Yeah, like they have to. They have to kind of see her. So yeah. it's one of those things where it's like. Well, was maybe the one that died a scroll that had just kind of taken over, and we have potentially multiple versions of Black Widow around because you know the, it real? also showed two two of them turned into the same person in in uh, Captain Marvel. Yeah. Maybe they they highlighted that okay. for okay. a reason. So I, I have a question though. So this, this is my question. So. Do you think Old Man Cap is now still Old Man Cap now knowing yeah. that, that knowing that Nick Fury was a scroll? Because like I said it, to your point, Larry, I said Nick Fury was out of character. I said it, he was he said, and, and Scott. I said Nick Fury was out of character for Nick Fury a little bit, and so you, you saw I said a little bit of changes for that, and so Captain America with his I said doing things for the greater good, not necessarily doing things for himself. He went back to bang Peggy Carter for all these years, and now he's this old man cap. Like maybe he never came back to our universe, I and the old that, man showed yeah. up as I I, yeah. I was yeah. I don't, I don't. I don't think. I don't think that was necessarily Cap. I think it was. I think Cap still stuck Scroll back. In time. Cap. Yeah, and, and if, if, if and if we get Cap stuck back in time, there's a couple. There's a couple <laughs> comic book story arcs that follow Cap stuck back in time. Oh, see, and that would make a really good movie too, like yeah. a, a period piece, Captain America. I, I would love the Vietnam so things, era, him yeah. meeting Nuke, not the Jessica Jones version of Nuke, but the the one that was actually like a uh, Vietnam soldier Nuke. The scrolls are like one of those like rabbit hole topics. You can just keep going down that rabbit hole further and further. Like, oh, what what if this could happen? What if this could happen? There's so many things you could do with that. I just want to see what they're gonna do. Yeah, it, it opened. Up, so regardless, so it, I think it opened up the door. Yes, uh, and I feel vindicated now that I said that it opened up the door. That now we have some some high profile characters yeah. that have come out as scrolls. You know, and Kevin Feige is going to be like Hopper and keep that door open three inches. Mm-hmm. Keep that, that door she... open three inches. <laughs> and if you want to keep the door open three inches, you should enter our super mega Stranger Things Spice Pack giveaway, <laughs> and you can win yourself some awesome Stranger Things. <laughs> Pops and autographs and miscellaneous stuff and like all that badge. sort of shit. 
Yeah. Larry, that was an amazing segue. <laughs> Yes, the Super Mega Stranger, Stranger Things prize pack giveaway. If you haven't entered, you really need to. SDS guys top fun. 3,000 entries already, and the daily ones is what it's going to win it for you. So get on it now. You got 13 days. So, oh, yeah. It will, and and uh, we haven't really talked about this, but we'll be in San Diego next weekend. So I'm assuming no podcast, right? Mm, yeah. yeah we'll, well maybe see, some we'll surprises see, to most, be seen to be seen yeah most likely no podcast um <laughs> but we'll be back definitely the following weekend uh that is when we will announce the winner of our super mega stranger things prize pack giveaway let's just say uh, i'm bringing my my like my mobile mic and everything just in case you are all right so we'll talk uh but the winner will be announced on the 27th we will be live stay tuned to all of our social media and we'll keep you updated uh on whether or not there'll be a podcast next weekend um, and if, even if we don't, uh, stay tuned to our YouTube channel because there will be content, uh, right? I think I mentioned in the chat, uh, one of our favorite videos last year, like, okay, one of our favorite all time SDS guys videos was when me and Jeremy sat outside their hotel room next to the pool and unboxed our, uh, Funko Fun Days stuff, our box of fun. Yes. So, yes, yes. right. You guys already know we're going to Fun Days. There'll be another Fun Days unboxing video here really soon. Stay tuned to all of our social media for a ton of pictures. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at SDS Guys. We're on Twitter at SDS Guys. And I promise to post at least one picture on Facebook at the STS Guys. <laughs> and I am Larry from the STS Guys. Shown like a villain. But seriously, tons of pictures and stuff. Nate's really good at taking pictures of all the different boots and stuff. Uh, there's going to be some cool stuff. Uh, we're probably a little Instagram heavy. So if you're not on Instagram or not following us there again at SDS guys, um, and I promise we'll post up some stuff on the other two. I've been trying to be more active on Twitter, so we'll see what happens. Either way, your feed is getting flooded with yeah. the SDS guys. I want to, I want to try to make some videos too. So we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, maybe, maybe uh, Jeremy can sneak into hall H on Saturday. Like who, who knows, man, well, but we'll, you, see, we'll see what we can do. You're going to want to stick with us throughout all of San Diego Comic-Con because the SDS guys are going to be your place to get all the greatest news, all the greatest pictures, see some exclusives, and you'll get to hang out with us all weekend. It's going to be a blast. It's the best. It's, it's the, best. the best. Speaking of the best, you should go check out the best podcast app, PodCoin, which is available on iOS and Android. What's PodCoin, you ask? It's the app that pays you to listen to podcasts. That's right. You can listen to all your favorite podcasts like the SDS guys, like DC and Figures and Collectibles podcasts, like Talking Pops, like Pop Collectors Alliance. We're all on there. And you can earn credits for every minute you listen to us. And then you can turn those credits into real life cash money rewards. That's right. PodCoin. It's the best. It's the best. <laughs> it's the best. All right. So for episode 92 of the sts guys coming soon to you from sunny san diego california i've been jeremy hey hey it's larry hey guys it's nate and i'm scott and we are the sts guys have a great night everybody and as collector comes says dollar dollar bills <laughs> dollar dollar bills y'all we will see most hopefully a lot of you next week in san diego if you're yeah. gonna be around hit us up so find us, get extra 50 points into the contest. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye.